Hi, I'm Christopher Bruton with the Caltech Spizo Lab. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Quantera Quantix Q8 data acquisition system, otherwise known as a data logger or a seismic digitizer. Um, the Q8 is a next generation system. It's the successor to the Q330 series, which has been around for at least 20 years. Um, we're really excited about getting our hands on these. Um, we haven't installed any at seismic monitoring stations yet, but later this year we'll be putting them out. Um, but for now, let's take a look at, at a Q8. So this is the, the Q8 unit. Um, it's pretty small. It's a lot smaller than the, the Q330 was. And we have a few different sides to this. So you're looking down from the top. And on top, we have a compartment for a, a USB drive. This is used for external storage um, to store a, a large amount of uh, seismic data. So um, if the device loses its connection to the network for a long time, I think we can store several months of, of data on this, this USB drive. It's a, a standard USB-A type connector, but, but this drive that came with it is a, I guess they call it a, a tough drive. Uh, this is a 32 gigabyte. It's probably um, high temperature rated and, and can take some, some abuse in, um, in harsh conditions. Um, so we'll plug it back in. This is a sealed lid. I think I think this is a completely waterproof compartment, so uh, not that we want to submerge this in water, but you know things happen. So then we have we have two sides where where cables can connect. So this side this is called the analog side, and we have um, let's see this this is the power power and GNSS antenna, so the GNSS or, or GPS that's used for, for timing, for getting a very accurate time signal. And then um, the actual seismic sensors, so the seismometers or accelerometers, those plug into here. Sensor A, sensor B, um, and then of course your, your ground, which, um, which you should connect if you're using grounding at your, at your station. Um, and then, then on the, the other side, side this, this is the digital panel. panel. So, so this, this has, has a big button, uh, Wi-Fi on, and we'll, we'll show you that in a bit. And then we also have um, an antenna for mesh net. I don't think this feature is fully fleshed out yet. I think it, it's going to take another software update before they, um, they get this working. But um, here at Caltech, I don't think we're going to use the, the mesh net. Um, yeah, yeah, Ethernet. Uh, we'll definitely be using that, and, and in this video I'll show you how to configure the, the Ethernet port. Uh, we have a, a USB port. I'm not actually sure what we would use that for. You can probably connect external storage or, or maybe other devices to this via USB. And then the last one, this is a timing in port. Um, we're not going to be using this. This would be if you want to connect um, an external time source. Um, like a, I think we can connect a one pulse per second uh, signal generator or, or an external um, time, timing device. Um, you might use that if you're, if you're deep inside a building or you have no way to get a GPS signal, um, then this can kind of relay the accurate time to you. Um, but for, for our use, we're going to plug a uh, GPS antenna directly into the, the GNSS um, receptacle here. So, so that's, that's the, the device, device itself. Um, let's, let's go through some of the accessories that came with it. So this first one, this is a Trimble GPS antenna. Um, it's pretty small, magnetic, magnetic mount. I don't have anything magnetic in this this picture, but um, it comes with a pretty long, long cable. Um, for us, we, we use this just for testing. Um, in, at actual field sites, we have a more robust outdoor antenna that, that will connect. But this is good enough to test. And um, surprisingly, I, I get enough GPS signal in this, uh, in this basement room to, 
um, to get this thing going. So, um, so we're going to start by connecting this to the um, GNSS port. Let's see. This can be a bit tricky to connect. I'm going to have to push, but not too hard. Okay, so that's in. Um, well, let's set this, let's set this over here. Uh, next up, so this table, this is a, let's open it up. This is an external timing cable. So this is, uh, this is what I was talking about. If you have an external timing device, um, we're not using this. I don't know why they sent these cables to us, um, but uh, just set this aside because we're, we're not going to be using this. Um, this one. This is a Ethernet cable, so we will be using this for sure. Um, so we have a standard RJ45 on one side, and then the um, you know the waterproof Sorio. Um, a very, very tough connector on the other side. Um, I think it forms a waterproof connection. So we'll be using that. And then the last cable, of course, is the power. Um, so I already prepared this cable so I can, I can get us going quickly today. Um, this cable actually includes includes power, so that's the red and the black wires here, but also um, there's four more wires. Two of them are for a uh, general purpose input, and the other two are for a general purpose input slash output. So um, we probably aren't going to be using these, but um, we might come up with, with something for them. But, but for now, I just taped them back um, to protect them and, and keep them out of the way. Um, I put this this red uh, PowerWorks connector on here. Um, this will give us, this will save us some time. Um, at a field site, then you probably are going to connect it a, a different way to, um, to the, the power source. Uh, the actual power input on these, I think it says on here, yeah, you can see right there, 10 to 30 volts DC, which is which is great because um, this can be used natively on a on a 24 volt um, power system. Uh, the Q330 series only accepted up to 18 volts, so if you wanted to use a 24 volt system, you would have to um, add a DC DC converter. But uh, this can run natively on 12 volts or 24 volts or anything up to 30 volts. Um, so let's let's connect the power cable and get this thing turned on. All right. These can be a bit tricky to connect. They have to go in exactly the right position. There we go. And just turn, wait for it to click. Um, so let's connect. So I've got a 24 volt power source set up already that we're going to connect this to. Let's see. Click. <laughs> All right. So once it's plugged in, then we should see some activity. Not yet. I think it, it takes a few minutes. Be there we go. It can take a few minutes on initial setup. There's actually a capacitor in here that has to charge up, and that's used for um, just to uh, as a kind of temporary battery um, to help with power fluctuations and to allow it to cleanly shut down if, if the power is lost. So let's just look. Huh? It's making some some noise. I don't know why. All right, so we have uh, Wi-Fi on, so that's, that's a good sign. Um, we're going to be using the Wi-Fi interface to get into this initially, and, and from there we can configure it to use the, the wired Ethernet. So let's 
set this back down and um, head over to the, the computer. All right, so to connect to Wi-Fi, um, we can find the network. Just wait. Do, 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 do. Let's try again. I've done this before. Not ready yet. I guess it's still I guess it's still starting up. Well, oh, in the meantime, let's check in a, a minute or so. In the meantime, I'll connect the Ethernet cable. Um, so this is also a bit of a tricky connector to put on. Um, to click other networks. This Mac keeps changing its interface. So we're, we're looking for this one, the Q8. Uh, this is the serial number of the device, the 510694. So it creates a, a network. Um, default password, I think. KMI, KMI, KMI. Uh, let's try that. Cool. So we're in. So on, I'm just going to give you a quick look at, um, this is the Q8 reference guide, it's a PDF, it's 227 pages long, you don't need to read the whole thing, but it's good to be familiar with this document because I think you'll refer to it um, repeatedly. So um, for this initial setup, some of this information is in, is in the quick start guide, which is on page 34. Of course it's not a link you can click, so we just scroll down to page 34 and let's see uh, it doesn't give us the the Wi-Fi password here um, let's take a look I think it's somewhere in this document For. Here we go. It wasn't in the quick start guide for some reason. So default password from the factory is KMI, KMI, KMI. Um, so let's go back into our web browser. Um, actually, let's go back to the quick start guide. Um, page 34. Okay, this is the address we need to go to. So, 172.22.22.1. So let's try that. 172.22.22.1. There we go. So this is the, the Q8's web interface. Um, and this, this is how we, how we configure it, view its status, everything. Um, Let's let's see what happens when I click status. Okay, so it's password protected. Um, username is admin. Again, this was all in the, the reference guide. 
Uh, the default password is just KMI and then the, the serial number. So in this case, it's KMI510694. Certainly, we want to change all these passwords um, before we send this out into the field. So, um, so the status view gives you a quick, a quick view of some of the, um, the software and hardware status. Some buttons, I, I don't know what all of these do. I haven't, uh, haven't explored them yet. Um, network tab, uh, this is where we set our IP address settings for the, um, for the Ethernet interface. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a, in a second. This is also how we can upload or download a configuration file, um, install a new software update, firmware update, and then uh, some network services and um, most of this doesn't apply to us, but, and then, um, oh, right at the top, we can reboot the OS or restart acquisition. This clear acquisition credential, that's, um, that resets one of the internal passwords, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a bit. Uh, what's under, under app? Okay, more about the config files. I'm, I'm not going to get into XML files today, but basically they, they define how, um, how to interpret the data from, a, from a, um, a seismometer or an accelerometer um, and what, what channels to record and, and so on. Um, digitizer page, here's, here's more, more status. Um, it's actually lots of, lots of information. Um, about the logger, about its GPS, um, the digitizer, the clock, everything. Um, GPS status, clearly this hasn't found, um, found a fix yet. It says 12 satellites in view, but uh, so it's seeing some satellites, but, but the number used is still zero. So this will just take some time, and especially since we're in a, a basement, it, it might take a while. Um, Commands, uh, we won't get into these, but these, these allow you to, to control the sensor if you need to um, control the GPS, uh, just a few, few options. Um, configuration, yeah, we're, we're not going to get into these, um, these today. I just wanted to show you the page. Um, and then what's in waveform? This actually gives you a live view of uh, the seismic waveforms. Um, but since we don't have a, a seismometer connected to this, then this is just showing you noise. There's nothing useful in here. Um, so let's go back to network. And um, we want to be able to access this through the, the wired Ethernet connection. So um, this is where we, where we set it. So you can use DHCP or static. In most cases, at Caltech, we'll be using the, the static address, um, which means we just specify what the IP address is. So let's just, let's just pick something on the private address range. We'll say 192.168. Um, I call it 27.10. And then slash 24. Uh, you might notice there's no field for subnet mask. Instead, we just put the, the cedar prefix, which is slash 24, and that's the most common one we, we use. Um, gateway, usually it's just the IP address with a dot one, but you'll need to, to ask, um, ask the, the network admin where you're installing this, um, which will usually be me. Um, if, if, you're, if you're doing this at Caltech, you'll ask me what, what addresses to put here. Um, and then DNS is usually the same thing too. So let's, um, we either have trial or make persistent. If you click trial, then this will, I think, set it for, for 10 minutes. And if, if you don't log back in and, um, confirm it, then you'll, uh, then it will automatically revert. So you might use this if you're making a change remotely and you're not sure if it's going to work. Um, for me, I'm, I'm, Pretty certain since I've got the device here on hand, and I can always get in via Wi-Fi if I need to. That I can just click Make Persistent, and um, and it'll work. 
So take, take some time for the network to restart. Um, in the meantime, I think we can can disconnect from from the Wi-Fi now, and we'll we'll get in via an Ethernet connection instead. So let's. Um, All right, so we've disconnected from that. I'm going to take this Ethernet cable and connect it to an Ethernet adapter behind my laptop. And then let's go into our network settings. Um, here it is. So we have to configure it manually since there's no, no DHCP server involved here. And we just set an address on that same range, 192.168.27. Um, we don't want it to be the same as the, the Q8, so we'll just set it to .5 instead of .10. Um, click Apply. And with some luck, we go back into the browser, and we should be able to get right into it at Address. Here we go. So this is the same page, but we're connected through the, the LAN interface instead. Um, so this is, uh, you're, you're in, and, and that's almost everything I wanted to show you in this video, but I do want to show you one more, one more important thing. Um, there's a secret page on here. If we go to slash q slash security dot htm. And this is, uh, again, this is still admin KMI 510-694. Um, this, this is where we, we set some more passwords for this device. Um, and there's also an, an important setting in here. So um, the master password, um, I guess this just encrypts the other passwords. So uh, we, can, we can always set a new password from, from this page if we, if we forget the old one. But obviously, you'll, you'll lose or destroy the, the, the other passwords that are, are set. Um, so let's just set this to the same, same default, 510694. I think once we actually uh, deploy these into the field, get them possibly exposed to the internet, then we're, we're going to want to use other passwords. But um, for now, we're just going to stick to defaults. Okay. Oh, come on. Click. There we go. Okay, so it's set. Type it again. No 694. Click decrypt. Um, this page is a bit weird. I don't know if this is a, a bug or it's supposed to do this, but, but all these passwords are don't appear decrypted. So it looks like it didn't actually decrypt them or there's some something going wrong in, in the browser. So we might um, want to ask uh, Quantera about this, but maybe it's supposed to be like this. Um, I don't know. Um, so this web server box, in the, in the user's guide, it says that this is not actually, these username and passwords aren't actually used for anything, so we're just going to um, ignore that. Um, this is the, the data server. So this is actually, these passwords are needed when we set up our, our acquisition servers at Caltech to connect to the Q8 and, and collect seismic data. So. Um, we need to set a password for, for each priority. Again, we're just going to use the defaults here, but, but once we set these up for real, we'll use a different password. So let's just set KMI510694. Put it in all four of these. Um, these, uh, these options here, the max samples per second, low latency, I, I think we still need to explore uh, these a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I think my colleague Alberto will will do a bit more experimenting with these and and figure out what what the best settings for these are. Um, this one, this is the station monitor maximum responses per minute, zero to disable. By default, out of the box, this was um, zero. So surprise, I already opened this up and and made some changes to it, but. Um, by default, it was zero, but it, it's really important to set this to something else because we're going to be using the, the station monitor server to uh, retrieve status for these devices. So, so set it to 60. That's that's a good good amount, one per second. Uh, that's reasonable. So we set new passwords and limits, and. Um, 
I think it's set. Oh. I think it's not liking what's what's in here, which doesn't really make sense, but let's just set these anyway. KMI five one oh six nine four. Alright, there we go. Um so yeah, that's the that's the Q eight. I hope this was helpful and um There we go. Yeah, see I'm I'm new to making videos and this is this is kinda ad hoc, but um, but yeah, I hope you got something out of it, and until um, next time, enjoy your, your Q8s.